Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and in this video we will cover how lifting technique may differ when training for strength compared with hypertrophy training. First and foremost, let's explore exactly what lifting technique means. Essentially, lifting technique refers to how the weight is lifted during each repetition. There are multiple factors that can be adjusted to alter technique, like range of motion, bar placement, hand and foot position, lifting tempo and more. We can adjust our technique based on what our goals are for any given lift. Let's now explore how technique may differ when training to maximize strength versus hypertrophy. When lifting for maximal strength, we are trying to lift the most weight possible within the constraints of the rules. Because strength is a performance goal, the best technique is that which produces the best result. This may differ between sports like powerlifting, weightlifting, strongman and crossfit because the rules of each sport and event are different. This brings up the point of specificity. Strength is specific to the task we perform. This means that being strong at one lift doesn't necessarily mean you'll be equally strong at another lift. For example, a crossfit athlete who can perform 10 cleans in a row in a short time frame won't necessarily be able to bench press a heavy load with powerlifting standards for a one rep max. Therefore, we need to tailor our lifting technique based on the specific demands of the sport or event. The range of motion used during any specific strength lift is going to be determined by the regulations of what is deemed a legal lift. It would be unnecessary to lift through a greater range of motion than this because this will probably result in less load lifted since more work must be done to lift through a greater range of motion. For example, a power lifter only needs to squat to a point where the hips are below the knees from a horizontal position. Therefore, a power lifter should squat to this depth for competition lifts and no further, otherwise they are simply limiting performance. In comparison, a weight lifter will almost always squat to maximum depth as they want the squat to transfer to the snatch and clean. The second consideration is biomechanics. This refers to how the lift is performed. This involves factors such as foot position, hand position, torso position and movement throughout the lift. To maximize strength, we want to use the biomechanically most efficient way to lift the weight. This will make the lift more efficient from both a physics standpoint and a metabolic standpoint. For example, powerlifters often use a wide grip, retracted shoulder blades and an arched spine when performing the bench press in competition. This makes the lift more biomechanically efficient by putting the body in a more favorable pressing position and cutting the range of motion slightly shorter. And the last primary technique consideration to maximize strength is tempo. This refers to the speed of lifting from both an eccentric and concentric standpoint. The tempo of the lift can influence performance to an extent. For example, if we want to maximize performance of the squat or bench press, we may want to allow a slight bounce at the bottom of the lift to take advantage of the stretch shortening cycle. However, if this breaches the rules, then you must maximize strength within the tempo that is allowed. Another example is high rep deadlifts during a CrossFit competition. CrossFitters often bounce the weight off the floor with each rep to get some elastic recoil. This makes each lift less energetically expensive, allowing them to perform more weight or more reps in a shorter time. Now that we have covered lifting technique for strength training, let's cover how technique can be adjusted to maximize muscle growth. First thing we need to understand is that hypertrophy is a structural adaptation, not a performance measure. Therefore, we aren't concerned with how much weight can be lifted, we are concerned with what technique is going to maximize the hypertrophy response. Therefore, technique will be slightly different to strength training. Let's now cover what factors we should consider when training to maximize hypertrophy. The first and most important consideration is the anatomy of the muscles we are trying to train. We need to make sure the exercise actually requires the target muscles to contract under load. Each muscle has a different anatomical structure and the exercises we implement will train different muscles. Not only should we ensure the exercise trains the muscles we are targeting, but we should also adjust technique to maximize tension on the muscle throughout the exercise. For example, if we perform a cable row for the upper back muscles, we shouldn't just use a technique that allows us to lift the most weight, we should ensure our technique maximally involves the upper back muscles. So we should make sure the shoulder blades are fully retracted at the end range and fully protracted at the start of the range. This will ensure the traps and rhomboids are actually recruited and trained properly. The second consideration for hypertrophy lifting technique is range of motion. Generally speaking, more range of motion results in greater hypertrophy outcomes. Furthermore, there is some evidence that active stretch under load is an independent hypertrophy mechanism. However, there is a point where excessive range of motion may actually take tension off the muscle and simply add additional joint stress without any additional hypertrophic stimulus. 
For example, if we perform dips so deep that our shoulder starts to round forward, or we squat so deep that the spine goes into flexion. So we basically want to train through maximum range of motion that still allows tension on the target muscle and the trainee can actively control throughout. The next technique consideration for hypertrophy training is biomechanics of the lift. Once again, this refers to how we lift the weight from a positional and movement standpoint. This ties in with the anatomy section where we want to use a technique that allows us to maximize tension on the target muscle. This is based on the anatomy of the muscle, what technique gives the best mind-muscle connection, and what produces muscle soreness the following day. For example, we may perform the leg press with a fairly narrow stance and a low foot position to maximize tension on the quads. Even though this may not allow us to lift the most weight, all the tension is on the quads rather than other muscle groups and joints, and they are taken through a greater range of motion. And the last consideration for hypertrophy training is tempo. For hypertrophy training, we want to use a tempo that ensures tension is placed on the target muscle throughout the entire range of motion. This generally means a slightly slower eccentric phase to control the load and minimize involvement of the stretch shortening cycle. By speeding up the tempo, we are relying on more elastic properties of the tendon rather than muscular contraction. This doesn't mean that each rep must be performed with an excessively slow tempo, it just means that we should ensure the muscle is actively contracting eccentrically rather than letting gravity do the work. For example, when performing calf raises, we want to ensure the entire eccentric portion is controlled so that there is minimal involvement of the stretch shortening cycle from the Achilles tendon. We have now covered the fundamentals of how technique may differ between strength and hypertrophy training, however we should understand that these are not polar opposite adaptations. This means that using a strength focused technique will still induce a hypertrophic stimulus, but it won't maximize hypertrophy. Similarly, a hypertrophy focused technique will still allow strength gains, but it won't maximize strength adaptations. Therefore, technique should be adjusted based on the goals of the individual at any given point in time. So what practical guidelines can we conclude from this information? Well, first and foremost, we should use a technique that is relative to our goals at any given point in time. If we are training to deadlift the most weight possible for a one rep max, then we should use a deadlift technique that allows the most weight to be lifted. While this will maximize strength, it may not be ideal for muscle growth of the glutes and hamstrings. So if our goals shift to a more hypertrophy oriented training approach, then we may use controlled full range stiff leg deadlifts instead. Furthermore, trainees can combine lifting goals if they desire. They can use a strength based technique for lifts to maximize strength and a hypertrophy based technique for other lifts to maximize muscle growth. For example, a trainee may want to be strong at the bench press, but also wants to grow their chest and triceps. In this case, they can train by performing one to two heavy sets of bench press using a strength focused technique, and then another few back off sets with lighter loads, higher rep ranges, and a hypertrophy oriented technique. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.